Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. With I'm me Michele. is Michele, who is going to talk about C++ programming in Unreal Engine. Michele, the floor is Thank yours. You. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Michele. Uh, maybe you already know me because uh, last year I attended a couple of meetings, uh, C++ meetings, uh, always about Unreal Engine. Uh, I'm passionate about Unreal Engine and uh, game engine in general. Uh, it's been always a passion for me. Uh, during uh, 2016 up to 2019, I've been uh, head uh, programming uh, uh, at Zulu Tech Italy in, uh, in Modena. And there I worked on um, a real-time uh, CAD program. Uh, basically, it's a software to draw houses. Uh, from there, of course, I kept on uh, working on um, Unreal Engine, also on my spare time. And that's why we are here today talking about Unreal. So uh, if you can uh, show these slides, I will go through some, um, I will go through some uh, introduction, which I think it's, uh, it's necessary because Real Engine is very, is very huge. And uh, there are a couple of things that maybe it's, uh, it's worth uh, exploring, uh, exploring. Uh, okay, so maybe I can, uh, I can open uh, Let's see. Let's see. I can open the slides myself. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, let's start. Uh, let's start by having a look at um, the main blocks of a uh, Unreal Engine, uh, especially those blocks that we are going to see today. So. A real engine is composed for what interests us uh, today of um, of uh, four let's call them uh, four main um, uh, areas of interest. Okay, so we have the blueprints, which are basically what you see online when you go, for example, when you go, for example, to YouTube to have a look at um, some uh, source code or some uh, uh, help uh, to get you started with Unreal Engine. For example, when you see when you look for a tutorial, when you look for help, you go to YouTube and you always see blueprints. Blueprints is a way to create uh, logic, game logic inside Unreal. It's an alternative way of writing logic uh, compared to the classic C++. And it's very uh, fast creating uh, logic in uh, blueprints. And that's why it's, uh, very, uh, it's a preferable way of most people uh, uh, creating tutorials on YouTube. It's very visual and uh, doesn't require you to know C++, which, as we know, C++ is a, is a very complex matter. Uh, of course, we have actors. Actors are, are those classes that uh, basically you can place in a world and um, will let you, as a developer, uh, specify the position, the rotation. So it's uh, like the building block, the basic building block of everything you spawn in the world. And then, of course, we have delegates. Delegates are uh, the way uh, Unreal uh, has to create, uh, um, you know, uh, it's a way to define uh, a dynamic binding uh, for which you are able, for example, to invoke some specific code, uh, not directly by, for example, invoking a method, but you instead invoke the delegate and the dele and the whoever is uh, um, is bound to the delegate will be able to to answer and of course uh, uh, as i um, talked in my last meeting last year we had subsystems actually i thought i hoped that subsystem would be more useful uh, actually in unreal it's just it's just a way to define some some code that you will not uh, uh, you will not have to 
specifically uh, instantiate because Unreal Engine will take the, will will take care of it. Uh, so going uh, going forward, um, blueprints are as I already said very fast to learn because there are no um, programming requirements. Uh, you you don't have to be a developer, a C++ developer, to make use of blueprints. It's very they are very fast to 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 use to create logic with them, and uh, they are basically uh, mandatory for anything UI related. And then of course you have C++ where you have full access to the Unreal Engine source code. You have many utility functions, uh, utility classes, which are very handy. And then you have, uh, of course, all the benefits of the C++. So uh, they are, it's very fast, if uh, properly programmed, uh, fast execution, I mean, uh, performance. Uh, it's very flexible. And uh, of course, since we are talking about uh, game development, uh, games are huge. So the code base is huge. Many people are working uh, on the same code, uh, code base. And having a source control support in this case is very, it's very uh, handy. Is very, I mean, it's almost uh, mandatory using a source control with the large code bases. Of course, blueprints are treated as uh, binary files, so uh, it's um, it's hard, uh, if not impossible, to uh, merge them. Uh, well, Arial has a way for uh, merging uh, blueprints, but. I, I would not recommend it. Um, so the blueprints are uh, basic. We will see them later uh, much more clearly. But just to to have a glimpse of uh, what blueprints are, are basically what you see in this picture. So you have uh, the the main area at the center where you actually create those nodes, and those are uh, are. Um, are each block has some logic behind it. So, for example, uh, this apply damage, as the name suggests, will apply some damage to the specified actor. Play sound at the location will play some sound at the location. So, as you can see, you can place many blocks and connect them to actually make logic work. And then, of course, on the right uh, pane, you have all the properties for the selected block. And on the left pane, you have all the blocks that, uh, well, not the blocks, but the components uh, which the actors and the blueprints are composed of. Because a real engine is an engine uh, which main paradigm is the composite pattern. So everything you have is actually a composition of uh, is a composition of components. Uh, each component isolates uh, very specific. Uh, a uh, very specific um, piece of logic. So, for example, you have the um, the collision component, you have the mesh component, and many others. Uh, so, as I was saying, we have the actors, which are the basic uh, the basic uh, building block we use for. Um, um, for objects that we place in the world and we want them to move and show something and interact. Uh, of course, actors uh, inherits from U object, which is the real base class of anything Unreal related. Uh, actors on their side are composed of components. <clears throat> so um, just to make uh, this very clear, actors have a list of components and each component defines its own behavior so you can actually have a very basic and common actor but you can customize this behavior by adding modifying replacing components at, at real time this is the key um, the key idea components can be swapped at real time and by doing this you are uh, you have a tons of freedom of uh, how you want the actor to behave. And then you have structures, uh, which uh, we will see in the source code, how they are used. Then we have delegates, as I was saying before. Delegates, we, in this, uh, in this, um, in this event, we will, <laughs> uh, 
work mainly with events. Uh, events are basically um, uh, delegates that can be uh, invoked only by, well, the event uh, can be raised only by the class that defines the event, but many other actors uh, or many other pieces of logic can uh, uh, bind to this uh, event and uh, execute some code when the event fires. There are other <clears throat> types of uh, delegates, but uh, in this, uh, in this, um, in this uh, source code, I don't think we will see them. Uh, delegates are declared using uh, um, macros. Well, a real engine uh, makes uh, heavy use of macro-like uh, functions. Actually, they are not. Uh, some of them are are uh, actually macros, but most of them are not. Uh, those are uh, directives you give the Unreal uh, uh, header tool that is a kind of a pre-compiler that uh, runs through the source code before the compiler is actually invoked and uh, creates um, additional code uh, that uh, make the whole Unreal Engine architecture work. So you declare uh, events, for example, like this, where you have an event which only, um, which actually doesn't have any kind of a parameter. You actually invoke an event, and uh, anybody who is listening to it uh, will know that something has happened. Uh, it, it doesn't require any parameter in this case, but of course, if you need, you can add parameters uh, by by this. So, for example, declare event, uh, one param, two params, uh, three params, etc. Um, and then we have, of course, the subsystems, as I was saying before. Uh, subsystem is just an architectural pattern. Uh, it helps uh, to improve modularity uh, because you are actually, uh, you can only focus uh, on what this component has to do instead of when you have to instantiate, when you have to kill it. Uh, you uh, specific, specifically uh, um, define uh, the kind of subsystem you want, and uh, by doing this, Unreal is able to uh, automatically instantiate and uh, manage the lifetime of, uh, of this subsystem you are creating. Uh, down here, you can see the usual steps that Unreal uh, Engine uh, follows uh, when you press start, when you uh, make your game start. Uh, so, by having a subsystem, uh, for example, in a UWorld subsystem, you know that you are creating a class which will be instantiating at this point in time and uh, will live un uh, up until this uh, object. Uh, is um, is alive. So, for example, if I change uh, map, uh, this will die, and instead everything that comes before it will still be will still be alive. So, if I want to persist some information, uh, for example, when moving, uh, traveling among different maps, uh, I can create, for example, a subsystem uh, that uh, I know that will be kept alive by Unreal. So it's it's just a, a handy way uh, for um, delegating Unreal uh, the creation and deletion of uh, objects. Okay, so I think we can start with uh, some actual code. Uh, okay, so what I did, I will start the the game. Meanwhile, uh, what I did is uh, I created a game, a very simple game. Uh, I will later uh, give you the uh, GitHub URL so you can download and uh, play with it if you want. You can uh, download the binary so you can directly play with it. And uh, you can, uh, of course, download the full source code with asset and everything needed to compile it on your own. So it's um, kind of a vertical scrolling shooter. So you have a spaceship which uh, moves 
uh, well, I show you. Uh, let's play it in. Uh, okay, well, let's play it this way. Okay, so as I was saying, you have a spaceship, and you can move it around by um, the keyboard, for example. But you, of course, it's unreal. You can bind the different. Um, you can bind different keys, so uh, you can shoot at the enemies, and eventually they will drop some uh, health booster so that you can replenish your uh, your um, health bar and uh, as soon as i kill this one a boss will spawn which basically is a, like the others will be alone and uh, it has way more health okay so i killed it and everything starts again okay so um, what I'd like to show you, of course, creating this whole game in uh, such a short time is not possible. So what I want, what I want to do is try instead to create together the player. So the spaceship I'm controlling. Okay, so since uh, uh, it will be it will be quite challenging uh, doing all this stuff with uh, the enemies. Uh, I will try and uh, disable them, of course, because otherwise it will be very difficult. So I'm going into the uh, game modes. Inside the game mode, uh, spawn uh, toggles can spawn enemies. I'm going to disable those so that if I play again, anything. It, it, everybody, everything is like we said we saw before, but we don't have any kind of enemies. We don't have asteroids coming at us. We are still able to move and shoot. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is create a new C++ class. I can do that right into the Unreal uh, uh, editor. So I'm creating a new class. Uh, I, I fear the uh, the screen is, uh, is is not clear to to read, but uh, just bear bear with me just for a second because we will go then to Visual Studio and it will be much better. Okay, so we are creating a new pawn. The pawn is basically an actor that can be poss possessed by the player, and that would be the that will be the, the spaceship you saw before. So we are creating a new one. Uh, we are calling it, uh, for example, uh, alternative player. And we are going to create it. So what Unreal is doing is creating the C++ and the header files. Uh, it's going to add them to the Visual Studio solution. And uh, once, uh, of course, is uh, is compiling right now, as you can see in the bottom, because this will be very. This is very useful to know if uh, we are um, introducing some problems while we are working with the, the Unreal editor. Of course, uh, at, the, at this moment, uh, Unreal is creating a, a blank, a, a, an empty class, so uh, it will of course work. Uh, but as you will see once it reaches uh, the end of this compilation process uh, well here as you can already see uh, visual studio is complaining that the solution has changed because uh, unreal added a c++ file to the solution so for this reason uh, the solution has been modified by unreal uh, the the files have been added to the solution so here I heard the sound, Unreal has compiled successfully. Okay, So going back to the source code, I'm going to reload. Of course, Visual Studio is asking to stop debugging. This is perfectly normal. And for a while, we'll stick with, uh, with Visual Studio. So we created the alternative player class, as you can see here. And uh, um, sorry, uh, share screen. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So this is the 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 class that Unreal creates. 
uh, it's a very basic implementation and uh, we want to actually customize it a bit. So for this reason, uh, I'm going to clean up some of this mess left by, left by Unreal. So the comments, we don't need them. Uh, we would make everything public because uh, we, we need it to be public for the moment. Uh, okay, I will go through and explain everything uh, as I'm uh, creating uh, stuff. Okay, so this is what we actually need right now. Uh, as I said, this is uh, the alternative player class which inherits from the pawn class we saw before. Uh, this is um, the generated body created by Unreal, as you can see here, generated.h. This is not a macro, this is, as I said, uh, a directive for the Unreal header tool. Okay, going to the CPP, we see that we still have many comments and stuff, except, well, let's clean just clean everything up, it's better. We re-implement everything on our own. Okay, uh, very important to remember, whenever we uh, override methods from base classes in Unreal, we always have to remember to call the base implementation, which in Unreal you can use the super uh, it's basically like a static class, but we are um, we are referring to the to the parent. So we have the setup player component, which is calling the super, and we are going to do the same on, on construction. We are going to do the same on begin play, and we are going to do the same on the tick. So the the thing is. The alternative player is a pawn, so it can, as I said before, it can be um, possessed by the player. So for this reason, we have to bind, for example, the inputs. Otherwise, we will not be able to tell the, the alternative player how to move and when to, perf when to react to the user input. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> this method here will be used later to bind to the input event. The construction happens before the begin play, so it's kind of it's kind of a constructor, uh, but not in the C++ term. It's the constructor of the Unreal class, let's call it. Because classes are created way before the game is started, and uh, for this reason, at this point in the C++ constructor, many things cannot be performed. Otherwise, Unreal will crash and will tell you this cannot be done in the constructor. So the C++ constructor uh, is used only to initialize those uh, uh, classes which... Um, well, to initialize the C++ part of the class. Anything that is more uh, Unreal related should be uh, initialized later, because otherwise you, you will not be able to do uh, to do so. Uh, so this is the constructor. Then we have the begin play, which uh, tells this actor that everything uh, well that at this point the actor has been put in the world in the game. So at this point we are going live. And uh, of course, we can uh, do some other things at this point. The tick function is instead uh, that function, that method that is, it is invoked at every frame. So, for example, if you want to move your actor, you can, uh, for example, put some logic here that will make the actor move. We are going to see that in a, in a moment. So, as I was saying, um, we want our actor to... Um, respond to user inputs. So for this reason, going back into the setup player input component, uh, we're going to, to specify a couple of things. For example, uh, we are going to uh, invoke uh, the bind axis method on the player input component. The bind axis tells us 
to respond to the, for example, move up and down event with uh, a function, a function we are going to create. So uh, the syntax is, uh, this is the, the, the name of the event. These, uh, of course, points to this class. And then we are going to specify uh, altern alternative player. Okay, the name of the function we want to um, to use. Okay, so whenever we receive this event, we want to handle it using this function, which we are going to create uh, right now. So uh, I have uh, some uh, some functions already created. So just to speed up a little bit everything. So I'm going to rename. The, okay, uh, going to the other side, I'm going to create private. Okay, so those are the methods we are going to bind our actors to. So we have move up and down, move left and right, <clears throat> fire primary a weapon, fire secondary weapon. And of course, uh, um, release uh, primary and secondary. Uh, because when you press a button, you want to start firing. When you release the button, you want to stop firing. Okay. Uh, so we are going to implement all the other all the other um, bindings. Okay. As you can see, at this point, you have. Uh, we have bind to move up and down and left and right, which are um, seen as axes and not as buttons, because, we for example... It. Just a yes. second. Just mm -hmm. a second. The font is too small. People cannot follow properly. Okay, you fine. Sure. Thank you. Sure. So. Uh, 200%. I hope to be more easy to, to read. Okay. Um, if it is small, please say it again, I will make it bigger. Uh, okay, so the axes are different than the actions in that, for example, if we think about using a, a pad, uh, for example, uh, yeah, a gamepad, a classic gamepad, you have the analog, um, you have the analog stick which doesn't just move all the way to the left or all the way to the right. It has also um, movement in between. So it's a, a linear movement between zero to minus one and plus one. For this reason, the axis, as you can see down here, uh, you have a float, which uh, is given as an argument to the function. Uh, this basically tells us also the direction because minus one is going in this case uh, down plus one is going up uh, well it's a convention but also left and right we have this float in the other cases where we have a bound to an action we don't have any any argument to the function because it's just a file and forget we receive the user has pressed the fire primary button, the user has released, uh, released the primary fire button. Um, the difference between pressed and released is uh, specified at this point here. Um, and so we did the same also for the secondary weapon. Uh, of course, we are going to uh, implement two properties which are here okay so uh, i will not go through the details of uh, the implementation of this uh, rate limited action basically it's a way to fire continuously without us having to uh, worry about the the actual implementation it's implemented inside with a with a timer so uh, fire basically tells the timer to start and uh, release tells the timer to stop. 
So it's uh, it's very handy to have it implemented in this way. Okay. Okay. Then we have the spawn projectiles also, uh, which basically, um, well, we have the. Um, I'm going to show you in the in the constructor. Okay. As I was saying, uh, we have the primary action, which is uh, the um, the timer uh, thing I explained to you before. Of course, we are going to create it at this point. We are going to set the fire rate, the rate of which the projectiles will be spawned. And of course, we want also to be able to tell the primary action or the secondary action what they actually need to do. So this is a kind of a callback. Uh, we are binding it uh, to a, a simple lambda, uh, to a simple lambda event. And uh, <clears throat> for this reason, I'm going also to. Uh, we are going basically to implement the uh, these missing uh, these missing uh, properties. So we want for example to uh well okay uh well we want to yeah of course before passing to before creating uh, these uh, we're going to define the spawn projectile so i'm going to copy this from here going back here and implement uh, declare that okay okay so we have the function right now we want to specify the fire rate the fire projectile which is the actor we want to spawn which represents our projectile and then the uh, fire sound we want to play whenever we spawn a projectile so going back here i'm going just to copy and paste them uh, from here, okay. So we want the fire rate. Uh, this is a new property with uh, many metadata information. Uh, we'll see them later. And of course, as I was saying, we want to uh, we want also to implement the primary and secondary fire sound and we want also to implement the to declare the other two properties which are the primary fire projectile secondary fire projectile uh, these are just uh, placeholders at the moment because we are not initializing them we will see later how they are initialized, how we specify this class, what kind of actor we want here at this point, which kind of sound we want here at this point. Okay, so uh, I think we can ask Visual Studio to compile and see if uh, we <coughs> didn't make any mistake. I don't think so. Okay. Okay, we were able to compile it successfully. Um, okay, we can go ahead a bit. Uh, okay, at this point, uh, we actually uh, defined some, some properties, but of course, if we think about our player, our player has some statistics, for example, the maximum health, the maximum uh, movement speed, but also um, the current health and uh, the current moment speed. So we have a full list of uh, uh, properties that we want our player to have. Uh, actually, they are quite a lot, so I'm not going through all of them. I'm just going to copy and paste those. Uh, we are going to, yeah, basically lose all these because I'm going to replace them. Okay. So as I was saying, we will have the maximum health, we will have the maximum movement speed, uh, some animation stuff, 
the that sound, uh, the that meter, which is a particle uh, particle effect that we will uh, um, play when the actor dies, for example. And the current health, the current movement, uh, and uh, some st status uh, stuff, and yeah, the animation, uh, some less important stuff. Okay. Uh, okay, this still compiles, fine. Uh, okay, we are going, of course, to initialize, to initialize some of the properties I've uh, defined in the header. Uh, of course, in the begin play, we want to... Uh, okay, let me just comment it out. Uh, of course, we want, for example, when the uh, game starts, we want to always set the current health of our player to the maximum health. And the spawn location, uh, this is just a, a state variable, uh, will track the original position the actor had before entering in the world. Well, at the right moment when it entered, it entered the, the world. Uh, okay, so um, going forward, uh, we are going also to implement the movement. Okay, so <clears throat> at this point we implemented uh, the fire action, so what the actor has to do when we want to fire, uh, basically starting and stopping uh, these two timers, and every time uh, the uh, the clock ticks. We uh, are going to call the spawn projectile, which we'll see uh, it later. Uh, so at this point, we can shoot. We can almost shoot. We want also to to move. So we are going to implement uh, the the movement in the tick function. Uh, basically, what we are going to do is. Um, we want to perform something like set actor location. The set actor location uh, is a function uh, defined by a real, which uh, allows us to move the actor transform, which is the uh, matrix that defines the position and rotation in the in the world. In this case, we are just concentrating on the part of the the transform that uh, moves the actor, well, that defines the position of the actor in the world. So we're just updating a, a part of the of the matrix. So we have the set actor location. Of course, we are going to add a delta to the current actor location. So since this is a, 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 a the tick function is called at every frame, we are just every time going to add some delta to the current location. The, the delta is basically an f vector. The vector is just three floats that we are going to uh, use in this way. So, for example, we are going to add a movement on the x-axis. Uh, okay. Okay, so by doing this, we are adding the current movement on the x-axis at every frame. And we are going to do the same also on the y-axis. The reason why I'm uh, doing this in, a, in, two different, in two separate steps is that uh, um, if we are moving on the x-axis, and we are hitting against something, uh, the actor will stop. So we will not be able to move up and down. So for example, if you are uh, going with your spaceship on the left um, limit of the map, the actor will not go uh, out of the map, but will of course hit the wall. Uh, since we hit the wall, the actor will stop. Uh, for this reason, by separating the movement on the X and Y, uh, we can stop a 
at this moment, the, the, this method will result in nothing done because the actor is hitting the wall. But then at the next uh, execution of the set actor locations, since we are just moving on the Y axis, there is nothing uh, holding us back from moving vertically. So this will continue to work even though we stopped uh, at this moment because we couldn't go any further on the left or on the right. So it, it's just a trick, okay? And then we are going to uh, modify the value uh, current, movement, current movement has. So for example, we are going to const auto define our target movement has a function of the max movement speed multiplied by the direction and multiplied by delta sex. Delta sex is a variable we um, are going to set here, of course, delta time. So by doing this, we are basically saying we want the actor ultimately to go at this speed, the target movement speed, which is basically the maximum movement speed for our actor, uh, which takes into account, of course, the direction. And uh, of course, we also want that the movement depends on the frame rate at which the uh, at which the the computer is uh, uh, computing the frames. Uh, by doing this, we are actually becoming um, uh, we are actually becoming uh, uh, frame rate independent because uh, the movement is uh, every time multiplied by uh, this uh, variable here, delta sex, which is the um, the duration of the last frame. So every time we uh, get called, uh, the tick function is called, we also are given this delta time. Delta time is just the difference uh, of time between this frame and the last. So we know how many seconds or milliseconds have passed since the last frame. And uh, by taking uh, this information into account, we are also able to uh, scale down the movement by how much time has passed. Because otherwise, if we kept the movement at constant, uh, of course, every time this is called, uh, we are adding always the same amount. Uh, and this, of course, results in bigger movements if uh, we are actually going slower, because, um, well, um, no, sorry, uh, we are going to move faster because uh, since this is a constant, uh, if the tick function is called uh, much more frequently, of course, we are going to invoke these more frequently. And since this is a constant, uh, the effect is that the actor will move a lot faster compared to slower computers. So for this reason, we are multiplying for uh, these. Uh, for these. Uh, OK, so we are going to do the same also on the um, left and right. And uh, we are going to update. Uh, yeah, we are going to update these. OK. This is up and down, so the current movement. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, what this is doing is telling I want to interpolate between the current movement, the movement at which I'm moving at the moment, and the target movement. And uh, I want to uh, be dependent on how many uh, seconds have passed, because this is the, just the interpolation, because we don't want to go from zero to maximum velocity in just one frame. 
we want it to scale a little bit so we have some acceleration while incrementing the speed and we want some deceleration while we are going to slow down and this will be frame rate dependent of course uh, and this is the uh, the acceleration rate so if we want to uh, accelerate uh, very fast to the maximum velocity or if we want to accelerate slowly okay and we are going to do basically the same also on the x so move left and right like this uh, yeah and the same is true okay so we updated the current movement on the y and x axis and uh, at this point we are actually uh, using them to make the actor move so at this point i think we are in a good position to see at least uh, something moving so we are going to uh, try and uh, compile it again and uh, we will try and uh, use it inside the Arial editor so at this point at least we should be able to see something moving of course we didn't uh, specify uh, many important things for example how our player should look what which is the mesh to show or um, which are the projectiles to spawn uh, the sounds the maximum health all these stats because the c++ class which we created here is just the basics and then we want to use this class to create a blueprint okay so the alternative player create a blueprint class based on alternative player so we are going to create a blueprint which we are going to place it for example here and we are going to call it as the convention suggests bp underscore the name of the class okay so we got this which is the blueprint based on our actor now i know that this is hard to read and i don't think i have uh, any meaning of making this better for you so please um, i'm sorry let's see if i'm able to zoom a bit uh, ah, i think it's way worse because it's flickering oh. okay okay so just follow what i'm what i'm what i'm saying uh, at this at this moment uh, we can set for example here we have maximum health maximum health in this case for example be 200 and then we will have the movement speed which is uh, for example 600 etc etc then we have uh, for example the primary fire sound those are all the properties that i've um, declared in the dot h with all those u property stuff and uh, thanks to how our real works everything that i expressed in the header file has a u property here you see as um, a list of properties which you can uh, uh, edit for example the primary fire sound is going to uh, show me a list of things that I can uh, uh, assign. So we have, for example, laser three, and we are going to do the same also for uh, the secondary sound, the emitter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the projectiles, uh, those are not used. So for uh, the mesh, as I was saying, we have to specify the the mesh we want to assign this actor so we are going to add a component static mesh component uh, the static mesh component uh, i'm going to assign the corvette f3 as you can see here uh, this is the the mesh of our of our actor uh, okay so i i think uh, uh, we are almost done with the time and I'm terribly terribly in a bad in a bad shape considering how little I've gone through um, well for this reason I think I can show you how the 
uh, original implementation is is done so uh, yeah okay don't worry okay uh, this is the same as before but as you can see on the left we have a box which is the collision that will be used on uh, uh, whenever we move the ship around and uh, we hit against something or also the other the the other enemies uh, projectiles and then we have the main mesh which is this one as you can see and then we have the um, some um, positions defined as uh, uh, just a vector uh, where we have the spawn location of, of our projectiles uh, so that for example in the source code we will go through all of those and we will iterate on them and uh, spawn projectiles based on uh, those positions uh, the in this case as you can see on the on the, on the left we uh, well on the right sorry we have already defined all the properties etc um unfortunately yeah uh, took uh, uh, it's unfortunate that i cannot show you anything more mm. i'm going for example to open the actual implementation my original implementation because i want to show you at least how to spawn the uh, projectiles uh, basically we are uh, iterating on uh, the as you can see here we are getting all the components on uh, this actor of this type scene component and uh, with some specific tag uh, so for example when we fire the primary uh, fire uh, we are going to look for uh, yeah those components which have the primary fire spawn location tag so I'm going through all of these components, I'm getting their position, and I'm using that position to, to spawn new actors, which are a projectile player base, quindi, uh, I mean, those are the uh, projectiles spawned by the player. We are going to spawn them at this gun location without any kind of rotation and so with some default parameters. And since we also defined some sound effects, we want to play it uh, as well. Okay, uh, I don't think we have uh, much more time. And uh... um, sorry, Michele, you are actually right. We are at, at the end of the time. I must ask you to uh, <laughs> wrap it up. Yeah, of course. Uh, I will stick around a bit uh, in the in the remo. Uh, well, you can ask me anything you want. Uh, of course, feel free to do so. Uh, I will gladly answer any questions you have. And uh, um, that's it. there is there is there are two questions. Uh, mm -hmm. First one is about the tooling you were using. Uh, they are asking. What tool did you use to manage the snippets of code that you were pasting in? Okay, so... Uh, I, I, <laughs> well, I have the whole implementation in uh, another uh, file on the second monitor. And I'm pasting them, of course, from there to the Visual Studio uh, page you are, sh you are seeing. So it's nothing fancy, it's just good old copy and paste. <laughs> but um, yeah, I can talk about uh, those suggestions and those are um, provided by uh, Resharper, which uh, works very well with, uh, with Unreal. It has uh, some uh, specific uh, um, functionality just for Unreal and uh, I think works quite well. Uh, there's also Nero's asking you to uh, share the GitHub, the GitHub repository. Sure. Uh, so it, 
if you have a new URL, you can show. Or... Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to show you. Uh, just a moment, please. Okay, so. Uh, zooming a bit. Uh, okay, so if you go in GitHub on M Mischitelli, I'm going to enable the source code. Of course, uh, you will have to excuse me because I named the uh, repository uh, wrong. Uh, I named I named it. Uh, uh, meetup uh, November 2020, while in reality it's not meetup, it's C++ day. So, sorry about that. Um, so, this one, this meetup November 2020, contains, as you can see, uh, all the source code. It also contains the releases, uh, the release 0 0.5. Well. It's something I have to I have to say. I based my work on a tutorial by a YouTuber. Uh, I, this has been done also because if you want to follow step by step all the steps to create the blueprints, this is very very useful. And I started from there, and then I converted everything to C plus plus, and I, and then I expanded the code base, and then the, I added also some um, logic on my own. So the, the GitHub is M Mischitelli slash meetup November 2020. And uh, I'm going to make it public. Uh, public. There, there's another question. Mm -hmm. uh, they're asking, is Unreal using the ECS paradigm? No. No, no, this is, of course, uh, a very, um, it's a very modern topic. Uh, it's something that uh, lately has been uh, going very strong in the um, game uh, development community. It's a pattern where you don't uh, um, reason uh, usually using um, objects uh, with the composite pattern. Uh, but as you as you were able to see, Unreal is strongly based on the composition. So you have an actor which is composed of components, and Unreal on its own doesn't support the ECS paradigm. Of course, there are many uh, very good implementation like NTT uh, uh, by Michele Caini. Uh, I, I think I saw a couple of implementations of NTT uh, in Unreal. Um, it's worth uh, it's worth uh, taking a shot because it's a very very good implementation, uh, and I like it very much. Uh, but yeah, the simple answer is no. Unreal doesn't support it. Thank you. And one last question. Mm -hmm is uh, well about versioning mm -hmm. and the question is how much of those details how many of those details change between versions uh, you mean versions of a real I, I imagine so yes okay so every time since as you can see here in the visual studio um, on the left side, where the Solution Explorer is, you have UE4. I know it's very small, so at least if you are not able to see, just trust me. Here you have the full source code available. And uh, for this reason, uh, you are basically tying your code base to the one of uh, Arial Engine. So, of course, every time Arial Engine changes, many things breaks and uh, this is how it is for the C++ uh, it's normal uh, of course epic uh, before uh, changing something very important uh, is going to warn you uh, with a couple of version in advance will mark uh, things are um, 
school mark teams are as deprecated so you, you will have some time to prepare for the changes and uh, sometimes uh, the changes are quite small other time is quite huge not in the compilation set of things but most uh, most often uh, you will see changes in uh, behavior uh, you will see changes in uh, uh, some yeah some classes of course will change but uh, maybe what changes the most is uh, how those classes um, behave with the others so maybe if uh, for example you were used to uh, rely on some um, functionality uh, you will see that uh, after some version maybe if this functionality is going to to be updated they will tell you and uh, they will tell you how to prepare for example stop using this component and of, instead use this other one because if you're going to use that component we are not going to guarantee that uh, it's going to still work well or maybe you will just going to uh, lose a lot of performance because we are reworking how for example meshes are treated in real time so uh, every time uh, epic releases a new version of a real engine uh, there is also a post on their forum where people uh, use them and uh, report problems. Uh, if they, for example, see something strange, they report bugs, they report uh, questions, and uh, sometimes uh, those are answered. So it's uh, the, the forum uh, it's a useful tool when uh, moving across versions of Arial. Thank you, Michele, and thank you to all our participants for sharing this presentation with us. Uh, time up, sadly, but I invite you to uh, reconnect again in the networking track. And yeah. Talk to Michele if you have any follow-up. Thank you very much, and have a nice break. Sorry for being over time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>